Hi everyone! Today we're introducing Iridomyrmex purpureus, widely known as the meat ant. Iridomyrmex purpureus is native to the vast and unique landscapes of Australia. These ants are highly adaptable and thrive in a variety of habitats, from open grasslands to arid scrublands. They construct large pebble mounds as their nests, which feature multiple entrances to accommodate the bustling activity of their colonies. These nests serve as fortresses, offering protection from predators and extreme weather conditions. You'll often spot them in sunny, open areas where they can efficiently forage and bask in the warmth provided by the sun. There, deep in the nest, the queen lays eggs among the care workers. Look at this queen and her elegant moves. This vibration here is the sign that an egg will soon see the light of day. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the queen is laying. On the surface, some mounds appear to be very old, more than several decades in some cases. That being said, let's get a more detailed picture of how they look like. These ants are medium to large in size and boast a striking appearance with a shiny, purplish hue on their bodies, hence their name. They exhibit a sophisticated division of labor even though they are all the same size, meaning that they are a monomorphic species. Don't try to look for a stinger here, they don't have any, but they can spray formic acid in order to defend themselves. Interestingly, meat ant colonies can grow to enormous sizes, often housing from a few thousands up to 300,000 individuals. You might have read that these ants have polycalic nests, meaning they consist of multiple interconnected nests. So let's have a pause here to reflect on the word polycalic. Identifying colony boundaries is crucial for studying ant behavior. In some cases, colonies have spatially separate subgroups within a genetically similar colony known as polydomy. Polydomy occurs when these subgroups function as a cooperative social unit, regularly exchanging workers and broods. Polycaly essentially differs from polydomy in the way that polycalic colonies consist of connected daughter nests that generally do not require interaction between members of different nests. In the case of Eridomyrmix purpureus, polydomy seems to be the most accurate description of their collective organization. Anyway, Eridomyrmix purpureus often has mature colonies with multiple queens, while new colonies rarely do. A study of 16 colonies near Maryborough, Victoria found that one colony could have two to four different DNA variations. This suggests many mature colonies have queens that aren't automatically genetically related. Another study, conducted in 2006, revealed that in polydomous colonies, workers must recognize colony mates from other nests. While ants were almost never aggressive to their own nestmates, they often showed aggression toward ants from different nests within the same colony suggesting colony odor is not fully shared between nests. As their name suggests, meat ants have a hearty appetite for protein. They feed on dead insects, but also on honeydew produced by aphids and other sugary substances. They are skilled scavengers and often play a crucial role in cleaning up carrion in their environment. But don't let their foraging habits fool you. A carcass of a sizable animal placed on a nest would be reduced to bones over a period of weeks. So imagine now the fate of this poor larva that crosses the path of their nest. It will be quickly turned on its back and then brought into the nest alive. These ants are fiercely territorial and aggressive. They actively patrol their nests and will swarm any intruders, making them a force to be reckoned with in their neighborhood. This small beetle is not having a good day. The ants do not just headlessly rush in, they've got a method. They will try to flip it over while attacking in waves and even aiming to weaken its legs. But the beetle's armor is tough and it's quicker than the ants might have expected. It's diving into the ants' garbage pile, trying to hide. But that move didn't fool them. The ants keep coming, tracking it across every surface, sand, rocks, leaves, you name it. Bit by bit, the beetle gets worn down and it's clearly running out of steam. In the end, the beetle's tough armor made all the difference. Exhausted but determined, it manages to push past the borders of this colony and escape the hunt. It's not a win, but survival is what matters here. Meat ants are also immune to the toxins of cane toads. 
an invasive species in Australia. This unique adaptation highlights their resilience and ecological importance as they can eat their corpses or hunt them when they are weakened. Speaking of their behavior, we'd like to share with you one last study realized in 2006. Researchers prove that purpureous ants use both personal memory and pheromones created by the collective to make decisions. When pheromones are removed, trained ants follow their memory. However, when memory and pheromones conflict, ants don't show a clear choice. That shows that ants are not only programmed machines, but can also make a decision of their own, ultimately benefiting their colony much more than they would have without the power that comes with a certain amount of autonomy. Finally, let's have a quick word about Iridomyrmex purpureus and their symbiotic relationships with other species. They tend to aphids for their honeydew and in return offer them protection from predators. They have the same type of deal with some caterpillar species until they turn into butterflies. Then they hunt them if they can't escape their surrounded cocoon fast enough. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed learning about the industrious Iridomyrmex purpureus, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.